Do you like to see a yardmaster hard at work, switching cars in and out, making up trains, and handling incoming trains, like shown here? Do you like seeing a big congested yard go bang? Light engine moves? Ever wonder just what a yardmaster does anyway? Or how about some local switching called the chrome collector that bangs into cars? If so, this video is for you. I'm Burr Stewart and welcome to part 58 of my continuing model railroad operating video series shot on my HO scale basement layout called the Burlington Northern. And today we're going to show you highlights of a recent operating session held in Seattle, Washington. And I put the camera on the Yardmaster in the main yard, the Interbay Yard in Seattle. So you'll get to watch him switch in and out of the various tracks. But I'm going to speed up the action so that it won't take all day to watch this. You'll be able to kind of figure out what's happening, even though this is kind of a low angle view. It's very similar to rail fanning on the real railroad. This X Great Northern switcher is the one that Scott is using, Scott being the yard master. There's also going to be a switcher with a BN green paint used by his assistant, Aiden, who's going to be running the Ballard local. So you'll see him pull that out of the yard a couple of times. Meanwhile, there'll be some through trains both departing from this yard as well as arriving, and some engine moves. And as you saw in the introduction, we're also going to have some time to watch the so-called chrome collector banging into an illegally parked automobile. Now here as we look at the yard, you can see some engines at least coming up on the main track on the left, as well as another set of engines that are leaving the engine terminal underneath the Dravis Street bridge there in the background. These engines that uh, just passed us came off a arriving freight and they're just going back to Back to the barn, as they say on the railroad. But Scott, meanwhile, is continuing to work putting together the next departing train. This layout is set in 1973, so you see the typical mix of 40 and 50 foot box cars and tank cars, Northwest lumber supplies, etc. I think I mentioned that I sped this video up about four times real, so you can't really understand what the people are saying. But the situation that Scott found himself in at the beginning of the op session was a number of cars that needed to be sent up to Everett, which is called the Bayside Yard, and we also have the Delta Yard. There are two yards in Everett. But basically the Yardmaster in Seattle needed to get those cars up there. And he did it with two different trains. One was a through northbound freight, which could drop off cars in Everett on its way to Vancouver, BC. And the other one was a local freight called the Euler, which worked the towns in between. Now here we have two engines coming in to take the local freight that I mentioned, the Euler, up towards Everett and beyond. I've cut the sections of the video so we don't have to wait for the action too long, but I'm not sure why he had to back up so much. I guess you could say he's pumping up the air brakes and getting ready to leave. Meanwhile, there's another set of locomotives that have come out of the engine facility on the left. They're on the main line waiting to take their train. I think these are the engines for the through freight. They will be in the motive power for the through freight, so they'll need to back onto their train, and then they can depart. Uh, it says two 
I slowed down the action because this is getting kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm going to hold up. I'm just clearing the crossover right now. Now the green switch engine in the background there is coupling up to his cars in order to take them to the Ballard branch. He's going to be in the third position in terms of priority. So first we have this consist of locomotives backing onto their train, and they're going to be the through freight. And we'll see a picture of them out on the road in a minute. Then to their, well, to their right, to our left, is the motive power for the oiler, which is a local train, and simply waiting here patiently until the through train gets out. And as I said before, the green switcher with the rotating beacon is the local for Ballard, which is a nearby town to the Inner Bay Yard, and they'll be the third one out. Well, it looks like our through freight is spooled up and we'll be pulling out of the crossover there. And we'll catch some footage of that in a minute out on the main line. Yeah. On the very right of the picture, you can see a new Walther's Jordan Spreader, which just arrived a week ago. A very cool model, lettered for the BN. I know that I'm not so this is the departure of train 140 to Bellingham in Vancouver, B.C. Today that train would be called HTAC BBT for merchandise train from Tacoma to Vancouver, British Columbia. You can see a mixture of typical freight cars for this part of the country. And a couple of minutes later, here's the same train out on the main line. You can just see again some northbound logs, some empty all-door box cars, as well as an empty lumber rack. I'm not sure why there's so much loaded logs there, but meanwhile, of course, the steam engine sound is from the narrow gauge loop. And when we're running trains on the standard gauge, we often entertain people with a narrow gauge steamer going by. You can see here. I mainly wanted to show you this because of how little you have to do to build a convincing operating model railroad. You just paint a little backdrop, put a little quarter inch plywood in front of it, slap down some track, wire it up to a DCC system of some kind, and start running trains. I recommend it. We had 11 people plus me in the basement for this operating session. It was a lot of fun. So back in the yard now, we've had the one train depart. Now it's time for the oiler to pull out. You can tell it's the oiler because it only has two locomotives on it. The one with three locomotives was a through train. This one is going to be doing a lot of switching all along the layout, so its first stop will be Muckleteo on the way to Everett, where it will switch out some tank cars, hence its name, the Oiler. And then it will go over to the Bayside Yard in Everett, and finally it will go up to Burlington Yard and pull down some cars that are up there. This video is just highlights from the op session. I didn't really get any views of the Burlington Yard this time, but I'll try to do that again in a different video. If you haven't watched my channel before, I have a lot of different videos uh, on this channel of different aspects of different operations. All you can do is just sit back and relax and enjoy them as, as much as you can. See this uh, green Northern Pacific boxcar was the subject of an earlier video because we watched it being changed from one train to another. It's a beautifully weathered car. More of these cars need to be weathered, but we'll get to that eventually. It's a lot of work to run a model railroad, what can I say? Yeah, if you could sort it, it's 
That wood chip car from Southern Pacific is going to the paper mill in Everett. I'll have to have a talk with the yard master because this caboose is lettered for yard service only and they're sending it out on a local job. That's not really the right caboose for this train, but what can you do? Now, I didn't capture all the switching, but that was the oiler out on the main. All right, you heard him say, get on out of here. He was referring to the Ballard Local, the switch engine that's going over to Ballard to work a bunch of industries there. So they're lining the switches, and he should be coming through soon. I slowed down the action for this part just because I really enjoy the wiggling of a train through several S-curves like this. And I thought you might too, and I didn't want to make it go too fast. Yeah, this is uh, Ballard, uh, Ballard Local. Uh, we're leaving, I'm leaving the yard. Uh, do I have clearance? Yep. All right, 10-4, thank you. Now that he's confirmed his clearance to get out on the main line just to go over to Ballard, he can speed up his engine a bit. I love the squiggly action when a train goes through S curves, multiple S curves, even uh, at low resolution like this. This is one of the new Rapido SW1200s with that spectacular rotating beacon that has four LED lights in it, so it really looks like it's turning. As Aiden says, he's going to actually make two trips back and forth to Ballard. This is the first long trip. It took him quite a while to do all this switching in Ballard, but at the very end of the video, I think you'll see him departing again with a shorter cut of cars later on in the session. I'm going to speed it back up again now. I think what we're going to see is some strange maneuvering of a variety of engines, because as you can see on the left, we had kind of too many engines in the engine terminal. So every time we needed to put an engine away or get a new one, we had to do some shuffling. And I regret that. I, in retrospect, I wish I had removed some of the engines from the engine terminal before the session started. But it was all good fun. What can I say? Now, if we want to look at these tracks now that they're cleared out a little bit, uh, let's get back to that in a minute. Let's watch this train. Oh, did you see them raise the bridge to Bellingham in the background there? This is a good illustration of how many cars this little switch engine can pull. This great northern switch engine is another Rapido locomotive. It's got a decent amount of weight. It can handle all these cars. The challenge of being a yard master on a model railroad is that you need some time to do this flat switching, as you see Scott doing, in and out, getting the cars on the right track. And when somebody comes through with a through train, it slows down the work. I was fortunate that during one of my operating sessions, an expert model railroader named Seth Newman suggested to me that I build an extra lead track which is this one that the switcher is on now, 
so that the trains could come in and out of the yard while the switcher was continuing to do classification work as you're seeing him do here. Just for fun, I'm going to speed up the video even more since we're going to do some more switching here before the next train comes in. That dark green boxcar looking thing is called an all-door boxcar and they were popular in the late 60s and early 70s but they had some structural issues and maintenance issues and fell out of favor fairly quickly. You never see those on a railroad today. And that was me blowing a steam engine because I was so happy at how well the operating session was going. That's my way of saying, thank you, I'm happy. Meanwhile, I wanted to mention the, the main track on the left is to the right of the engine terminal. And then to the right of that main track is a standing train. I'm not sure what it is with a BM green engine on the front. That's the A track, which is used for arrival and departure. The next track to its right is the B track, also used for arrival and departure. And then the C track, which the switch engine is on, is used for both classification and for train makeup. Of course, if you have a train made up on one of the other classification tracks to the right, you can originate the train directly from there. You don't have to use the arrival departure tracks. So it's nice to keep these tracks on the left here uh, open for incoming trains as we're about to experience. In any event, that's kind of an overview of what the Yardmaster's job is, to keep the arrival departure tracks available both loaded with outgoing trains, as you see him doing here on the C-track, as well as handling the incoming trains and breaking them down as quickly as possible. Looks like I got happy again. I slowed it down so that you can enjoy this incoming train. As well as the crew banter. I love those SFRD orange cars. They were built in the 1960s, so they totally belong here, even though we're a little far from Santa Fe territory up here in Seattle. It's kind of a short train. I'm guessing that it's the arrival of the oiler having completed its work. Just one guess. It might be a transfer from the yard master up at Everett. I can't remember. You can see me surveying the scene there, but it's going well. Now, in the engine terminal there, you see a couple locomotives from the Southern Pacific. They were part of the pool fleet that would come up here from California. And later in the video, you'll see us put those locomotives on a southbound train to Portland so that they can get back to their home territory. I think that makes it more realistic when you have a locomotive going in the right direction, just like it does when you have cars going in the right direction. Well, these three locomotives, no, four locomotives, I believe are going back to the roundhouse, although I'm not sure where they're going to fit. They're probably going to have to go all the way down on the main line and then come into the engine terminal from the other end. That one track that appears to be open in the engine terminal is actually a very short track just used for sand hoppers, for putting sand in the locomotives. Okay, here we're bringing some BN power in to join the SP power. 
and then they'll move that down to the other end so that it'll be ready for the departing southbound train. First we have to set up the consist so all four of these engines run together. Meanwhile you can see we're repositioning those other engines back in the back track. This is called hostling, uh, moving locomotives around. Now we got it, the consist all together. Whoops. Now they're all coupled together and we're moving it down to the other end so we can put it onto a train. And in a minute you'll see that train depart southbound. See what I mean about how we're repositioning power? There's not enough empty slots in there. We had to keep moving people around. Now you can see them moving those engines, uh, ending with the Southern Pacific, down to the south end of the yard to pick up the southbound through freight that's going to go into the Portland staging. And of course, while that operation's going on, the yardmaster is still busy switching cars, trying to keep up with all this traffic. At the moment, it looks like he's picking up a caboose to stick on the end of that southbound train. In a minute, we'll see him depart the southbound train and we'll get to watch it go towards the tunnel in downtown Seattle. In case you wondered how I took this video of the yard, you can see in the upper left-hand corner a GoPro camera with a piece of balsa wood propped underneath it, and it takes a nice picture. I set it to 4K, but magnified to 70 degrees, it ends up a little less. I'll focus on the yard. You can see that's just what we've been looking at. This is the Emerson Street Bridge it's sitting on, just like you would as a rail fan. Also, I wanted you to see that Jordan spreader from the other end. And there's a plow. That's a special operation we'll do someday. There we go. The SP locomotives have coupled onto their train. And once they do a brake test, they'll be able to depart southbound through downtown Seattle, which you see in the backdrop in the, in the right there. Of course, the yardmaster will be delighted to get this track clear so he can put other things in there. You can also see the caboose of the short train that just arrived a minute ago. This is kind of a short train at the moment, but our plan is to add another 15 cars when we get over to Stacy Street Yard in South Seattle before heading into the staging tracks at, into, towards Portland. Oh, there's our head end power. Nice. Well, we're blowing for the grade crossing, which is good. Now can we get the rotating beacon on? There we go. I know, I'm a little obsessed with the F-45s. They're really cool. Nice to hear those grade crossing bells working. I turned the volume down a little bit since the last video. Well, it's not quite as irritating. And southbound through freight, what can I say? I 
As nice as that photo backdrop is, it's also a good illustration of how a little bit of backdrop is better than no backdrop. And these green hills at least give you the idea that we're located somewhere. It'd be nice to get the photo backdrop all the way across to the north portal, but I don't know how long that'll take me to figure out. In the meantime, we'll just keep enjoying videos, right? Now, meanwhile, over in Burlington, Washington, Chuck Lee has been working the concrete local, which goes up towards the Cascade Mountains and works a limestone cement plant as well as some lumber mills. You can see he's shoving an empty wood chip car up there as well as some of those all-door cars I was talking about before. And over here in Everett, Brian's fooling around with a couple of his engines while he tries to be the yard master there. You've seen these engines in some previous videos. They're really gorgeous. He did all the super detailing of them. Very nice. That was for you, bro. He's being assisted today by Lisa, and she's about to bang into that car. I need to grab the last cars and the caboose I need to grab with. While up on the hill, the narrow gauge is still chugging away. A little later, the oiler comes down from Burlington and it's heading on into Interbay. I think it may be done working Bayside here. Oh, never mind. I'm, you're going down the lead. Yeah, and you're going down. And of course, Interbay is continuing to be switched by that well, great actually, northern I'm switcher. I gotta well, make actually, I need you to stop about and here. you can well, see Aiden is trying to move do. his switch engine back out to Ballard with a few more cars. Right he doesn't have quite as many this time, but there's a lot of switching to do in Ballard. They're trying to work out whether or not he can go out on the main line and get into Ballard before the oiler comes in from Bayside Yard, which I just showed you a minute ago. So line that, line that switch back over the, there, just that one. Meanwhile, these engines are just going back to the roundhouse, I believe. No, you're lined right. No, I'm wrong about that. These engines are going to head up to Bayside in order to help with an extra train that was called from Bayside up to Burlington just to help clear out the Bayside yard, which got kind of congested. So Scott's going to pull the switcher out of the way back into the yard and let Aiden go out to run the Ballard Local one more time while we watch these four engines run light between Inner Bay and Bayside. Am I out of your way? Nice Jordan crossing? spreader there too, isn't it? Yeah, you're clear of that crossover. Yes. Why don't you go on the High Line into Delta and then reverse on the Y into Bayside and then you'll be at the right end of the yard to get on your train. Okay. That's not upcoming. All right. Thing. That sounds like a good thing. I'm out of your first spot. Well, almost. I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, it's very premature. Well, you can hear a lot of uh, plans are being made by the dispatcher and the other crew members. Meanwhile, we get to watch this light engine move. They didn't even need to take a caboose with them because they're just repositioning the engines in order to run a train up from Everett. Oh, 
I may have inadvertently recoupled you. That's all right. My apologies if I did. Now this is a first. I was able to get a somewhat candid shot of Bill Sorensen running a job they called the Chrome Collector, and you can see why. People would illegally park on the street, and then the engine would crash with the car, and then they'd have to call the police and do an accident report and the whole rest of it. In this case, we just pushed the car out of the way and went on with Bill's switching work. Giant and this is an area that was underneath the uh, old Seattle viaduct and a little bit north of there and included a uh, Union Oil Depot and some warehouses and the Seattle steam plant, which was for many years used burning coal to heat the buildings in downtown Seattle. You can see here where he's going in to pull some empties out of that Seattle steam plant. And then he's going to tie on to some refrigerator cars coming out of one of the produce warehouses that were right along downtown. And he'll also pull the tank cars out of Union Oil Terminal. Of course, that became a Superfund site and is now the location of a beautiful sculpture garden operated by the Seattle Art Museum. Bang! Bill's really enjoying using the proto throttle for this job. But I didn't take any video showing that. Someday we'll do a video of using a proto throttle. For now, you'll just have to imagine those clicks in the background being the throttle settings. Bang! This little pocket-sized switching area is tucked behind the grain terminal next to the stairs, so it's kind of fun to operate because you can sit on the stairs while you're switching the cars. Obviously, it could use some more scenery and backdrop, but we'll get to that eventually. The Chrome Collector. Well, I went over to the Snohomish River Bridge, and there was a train coming down from Arlington. This was the oiler returning. Remember, I was complaining about the caboose on that train. And then over in South Seattle, that through freight I told you about earlier was departing and leaving into the Portland Staging Yard. So that about wraps it up for this highlights video. I hope you've enjoyed this and you'll come back and see many more videos on my channel. In the meantime, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.